Are you ready for the ritual? No, but let's do it anyway. Come out, wherever you are. Come on, show yourself. Red. It's behind me, isn't it? Yes. Of course it is. Every bloody time. Hello and welcome to Lobajit Gaming and welcome to my review for Vanishers Ghosts of New Eden. So this is a new action RPG uh, coming out on the 13th of February. This is made by Dot Nod Entertainment and Focus is the publisher. So I was lucky enough to get a advanced copy from Focus well in advance so I could complete and finish the game and bring you this review. Now I'll try and keep this spoiler free because I have plans for separate videos for some combat and other gameplay examples. So that way I can sort of just focus on the main thing here, who this game is for, what it is, how long it will take, performance, things like that. So first I'll quickly go over the story, the stuff that is already shown in the trailers and the gameplay videos, so I don't spoil anything. The game is set in the year 1695 in New Eden, New England, and these are the people who are settlers to North America. You play as a couple of banishers, Red McRith and Antia Duarte who are asked to come to New Eden to lift a curse by their dear friend, Charles Davenport, who is also a banisher. Now, Charles Davenport is a master banisher. So these two are already worried that if he's asking them to come to help him, then this must be something serious. And it is something serious. So at the very start, you enter New England, New Eden, and you explore the place. You meet the people there. It turns out the place is badly cursed and there are only a few people left. They've sent the children away. And yeah, everybody's trying to get out. You also run into ghosts on the way, dead people, stuff like that. So very soon into the game, after you've done like the basic exploration, you encounter this nightmare. So nightmare in this game is basically a very powerful ghost. And during this uh, incident, Antea gets killed by the nightmare and Red is left to die, but he survives. And then the actual game starts where you wake up as Red, reunite with the ghost of Antea, and then you go about trying to lift the curse. So this whole area is affected by the curse. All the people are affected. There are lots of little towns with a few people living, small populations, and each of them have their own stories and their own uh, issues. So you have to talk to them and solve their cases. So that is basically the story of the game. Now this is an action RPG, so there's a lot of story, dialogue, and there's also a very interesting combat system. The performance of the game was surprisingly decent. Now I don't have a very powerful system, but I still managed to get comfortable frame rates, even on the lowest setting. What you're seeing in the background, this is me recording at the lowest settings. And if you have something like a 1060 or an AMD 580, you should get 30 FPS easily on the lowest settings. And it still looks pretty good. Like you see here in the background, this is uh, 30 FPS at the lowest setting. And to me, it was perfectly fine. 
If you have a more powerful PC, you can go higher up. The recommended is 2060 and a 6700, I believe, on the AMD side. So yeah, performance, there was no problems. Well over 20 hours into the game, I have not experienced any issues, no crashes, no starters, nothing like that. It ran very smoothly and went very well. Now on to the gameplay itself. So the gameplay involves you solving haunting cases for the people of New England. And uh, these can be the main quest line or some side activities where basically somebody is haunted by a ghost and you have to figure out why this ghost is still haunting this person, what is the connection, uh, why is it still here basically, and how you can deal with this, what to do with the ghost, stuff like that, who's to blame, things like that. Now, this is one of the main sort of uh, detective style of quests that you get here, and that is something I really enjoyed. Of course, there is the combat system, which is uh, basically both of you playing together. So you can play as Red, who's human alive, and he has his swords and stuff and he fights. There's a normal attack, light attack, heavy attack, charge attack, things like that. They also have a system called the banishment or vanishing attack, where basically if you charge it up, you can just banish the ghost by one powerful hit. Now, Antea on the other hand is a ghost. So she has some supernatural attacks. She can punch the ghost and the skill tree is quite interesting because you can use some bonuses from let's say Antea, where if you hit four times red's gun will get reloaded and things like that so quite a vast system here in terms of the uh, skill trees now besides this um, the map is quite big at least as far as i could tell it's not technically an open world but it felt like a big open world map you can fast travel around and you can keep walking there was a session where i was playing i was looking for something and I was missing one ingredient, even though it was just nearby, I did not spot it. But I went away looking for that ingredient, and I ended up like three, four hours of just exploring the map. So it is quite big, quite interesting, a lot of different locations. You have a beach, you have like dark woods, you have a, a snowy area, fort region. So plenty of options and a pretty interesting uh, looking game. Uh, you also have weapons and armor upgrades and customizations and things like that. So both of them have certain items that you can equip and the more powerful it is, the more abilities and things you get. The game also has a photo mode and multiple difficulty settings, which was surprising. There are five difficulty settings. So pretty much you can choose how you want to play the game. If you like the story side of things more, you can go for the easier difficulties and just focus on the story and solving the haunting cases which I enjoyed quite a lot. Or you could go uh, and increase the difficulty to get a more satisfying combat. Both of them work depending on how you like to play the game. Now onto a few things that I did not like. Um, there is no mini map, which kind of made it a little tricky to navigate sometimes because it's one of those games where uh, you have to go somewhere and on the map it might seem closer or further away and when you are walking in the game you may end up going a lot further than you expected and you can also not mark things directly on the map which i did not like so you can only mark uh, like the quest objectives or the known locations you can't randomly mark a spot on the road or something so that was one or two minor things that uh, felt a little uh, annoying uh, navigation wise wasn't a big issue because you have fast travel points or camps quite nearby also you can only fast travel uh, from the camps. And you do find camps quite regularly, but you can only fast travel through there. And also you can only upgrade your weapons and armor and your characters like the skill tree through the camp. You cannot just do it randomly on the road. So you have to reach a camp and then do the upgrades. So that is also something I felt was not that important gameplay wise. Maybe there's a reason for that, but I just didn't see why it was done like that. It could have been done like much more. Easily, especially on the harder difficulties when you want to upgrade the stuff, you have to find a camp first. So that is something I did not like. Things I liked a lot in the game. Like I mentioned already, haunting cases. So these are side quests as well as main quests where somebody is haunted, let's say, and you have to figure out why they are being haunted by a ghost, who this ghost is, what is the connection between them, and how you can get rid of the ghost, who is to blame, things like that. So that was something I enjoyed quite a lot and quite a few cases like that and I was enjoying every one of them. 
Um, there are also quite uh, a few options in those quests because they can go anywhere. There are multiple outcomes and it's up to you how you choose to solve those cases. A lot of these cases are also not straightforward. It's not like a black and white, this is wrong, this is right. You have to sort of come up with your own conclusions, which was very interesting. Like a lot of the gray area type of stuff where if you remember the um, Witcher quest lines, uh, things like the Bloody Baron quest, I got a bit of a feel of that here because nothing is straightforward. So I liked that one quite a lot. Combat is, like I said, very interesting as well, very fun. And the best thing is you can make it as hard or as easy as you like. So if you are just interested in the story, you can pick one of the easiest difficulties and just focus on the story. I enjoy the RPG side of like going through the entire dialogue options and things like that and just do that. Or you could focus on the uh, combat by making it harder and more challenging. So it's completely flexible in that regard. Really liked it. I also enjoyed the side stuff. So you can just randomly walk, find a windmill, go up to it and find a treasure, find a cursed treasure chest. And then you have to find some items and um, basically do a ritual to unlock it. Um, I'll go over more detail in a separate video for the rituals and how the gameplay works. But basically you have um, a certain set of rituals that you have to perform for these quest lines and depending on the situation there are different rituals so if you do the wrong ritual you will use up your resources and then find more if you don't have enough and then do the right one so that was also quite interesting again it reminded me a little bit of witcher in those things uh, the protagonists are also pretty good i liked red back uh, scottish accent is always fun and the guys a nice character to have and Taya is like a more serious type and they've sort of both complement each other very well and yeah overall very enjoyable game uh, it took me almost 30 hours to finish it and I did not complete each and everything available here like a lot of the side stuff uh, you know the random open world discovery stuff you find treasure boxes or maps to hidden treasures things like that I did not complete each and everything there but um, even so, it took me 30 hours. And there are a few side uh, cases that I haven't finished either. So you can get plenty of time. I would say if you're just focusing on the story and trying to finish it as fast as possible, um, you'll probably take 25 hours, I would say. If you're doing a full completionist with all the side stuff, at least all the side quests and stuff, I would say at least 40 to 50 hours comfortably. So if you like a big RPG, um, then you'll definitely enjoy this one. Uh, okay, so what else do I need to mention? I haven't uh, mentioned the main story point, which again, this part is discussed in the trailer, so I'll mention it here. Basically, like I said, Antea gets uh, killed by the nightmare at the start of the game. And one of the main sort of overarching story thing here is whether you want Antea to come back and take her human form again or let her go. And this is something you have to decide. And the way you decide this is how you solve the cases, the haunting cases. So the more cases you do, and basically, depending on which way you choose to, you know, complete the cases, that will depend on whether she comes back. Let's put it that way. I don't want to spoil it. But basically, it's up to how you solve the cases and how many go your way and how many don't. And that will decide whether she comes back at the end or not. So that was also something interesting. And that is why the choices are very important in this. one. I like the game quite a lot. Um, I'm a big fan of these sort of double A RPGs. And this was excellent. It reminded me of stuff like Greedfall or uh, Vampire or Plague Tale Innocence. I think those games would fall in the double A category. This one also was very well done. Uh, of course, this was not as linear as something like uh, Plague Tale, for example. This is a much more of an RPG. So a lot of flexibility, a lot of choices, also a bigger game. And But yeah, it fills that niche where Focus is probably one of the few publishers that tries these interesting new ideas and new gameplay mechanics. So I really like this game. It was different. If you know me, you know I like different stuff. I want, I'm tired of the AAA formula. So this was excellent, very enjoyable. And I would highly recommend this. It's also priced quite reasonably. So 
if you are looking to pick it up day one, this shouldn't be a problem because it's not that expensive. You can also wait and wish list this and pick it up later if you want. But I would highly recommend you to check this out. If you're a fan of RPGs, action RPGs, if you don't mind the exploration, if you like games like Witcher and those style of games where Bioshock games, etc., where you want a bit of exploration, bit of story, mixture of all those things. So you'll definitely like that part here. Um, so yeah, I've, I've covered most of the things I wanted to say. I'll make a combat uh, gameplay example video and maybe I'll try and solve a haunting case. I'll pick maybe one of the side quests and show you how that goes with, so that it doesn't spoil things. And yeah, uh, maybe a few other videos if I can think of any. But overall, very happy to try this out. First big game I've completed this year and I think it's a fantastic new game. Definitely something I'll be recommending on my sales channel in the future. Um, and yeah, like I said, there will be a big day one patch as well. Although I had no issues with the game. Um, not a single crash in over 20 hours. Um, performance was also fine, no stuttering, nothing like that. And I recorded most of it, so it wasn't too demanding on that front either. So yeah, this should be perfectly fine. That's it for this one. Thank you for watching. Keep an eye out for some of the other videos. I'll maybe publish them soon after this one. Thanks for dropping by. See you next time.